Welcome, everyone. My name is Ted O'Connell. I'm one of the authors of Crush Step 1, the ultimate USMLE Step 1 review. This is the second edition of the book, and we're going through it chapter by chapter. This is part 10 of the cardiology chapter. We're going to start by picking up again with the vasculitides. Vasculitis refers to inflammation of the blood vessels, which can be classified as small vessel vasculitis, affecting small vessels such as capillaries, medium vessel vasculitis affecting smaller muscular arteries, and large vessel vasculitis affecting the large elastic arteries such as the aorta. Now let's talk about specific vasculitis syndromes, beginning with large vessel vasculitis. Takayasu arteritis, also called pulseless disease, affects the aortic arch. It affects young Asian women and is called pulseless disease because granulomatous damage and narrowing of the aortic arch vessels and subclavian artery cause a loss of pulses in the upper extremity. Symptoms of systemic inflammation occur, such as fever, weight loss, fatigue, and muscle aching. Skin nodules can also be present. Narrowing of the carotid arteries can lead to strokes and visual defects. Next is giant cell arteritis, also called temporal arteritis, and this affects branches of the carotid arteries, the superficial temporal artery, and the ophthalmic artery. Giant cell arteritis affects adults, mostly women, over 50 years of age, causing inflammation of branches of the carotid artery. This leads to headache, pain with chewing from stretching of the inflamed artery, and this is called jaw claudication, can cause blindness from ophthalmic artery involvement and systemic symptoms such as fever. It's associated with an elevated ESR, which is sensitive but not specific. Half of patients will have polymyalgia rheumatica. When suspected, start steroids immediately and biopsy after. Don't wait for biopsy results or blindness may occur. Now we'll switch over to the medium vessel vasculitis starting with polyarteritis nodosa, which affects medium-sized vessels other than the pulmonary arteries, that is, the renal, coronary, arteries to the skin, and arteries to the gut. Polyarteritis nodosa affects adult males and those with hepatitis B, causing varied symptoms that depend on which arteries involved, hence polyarteritis, many different arteries affected in different stages. You can, the patients can get abdominal pain and or bloody stools if the GI arteries are affected, renal failure if the renal arteries are affected, skin ulcers if skin arteries are affected, and myocardial infarction if the coronary arteries are affected. It is important that the lungs are essentially never affected. This is important to distinguish this, distinguish this from granulomatosis with polyangitis formerly called Wegener granulomatosis. Polyarteritis nodosa is treated with steroids. Next is granulomatosis with polyangiitis, formerly known as Wegener granulomatosis, which affects the lung and kidney vessels. This disease process affects children and adolescents. Thus, it's known as pulmonary renal disease because it primarily affects the lungs and kidneys. This is different from polyarteritis nodosa because the lung, both the upper airway and lung parenchyma, is affected. Classic findings include chronic sinusitis with nasal septal perforation, a saddle nose deformity, hemoptysis from lung involvement, and hematuria from renal involvement. C. anca is a marker of disease. Treat with cyclophosphamide and ster steroids. Remember the C's of granulomatosis with polyangiitis. C. anca, corticosteroids, and cyclophosphamide. Next is Kawasaki disease, which affects the coronary arteries. This disease process affects mostly Asian children with the potential to cause coronary aneurysms and myocardial infarctions if untreated. Suspect this in any child with a fever for five or more days. There's a mnemonic, crash and burn, where C is for conjunctivitis, R is for rash, a is for adenopathy, which is cervical adenopathy. S is for strawberry tongue. H is for hand and feet changes, swelling, and desquamation. 
And then the burn is for the fever, which is five or more days. Treatment is IV immunoglobulin and aspirin, which is the only time you ever give a child aspirin. Remember the association with Rye syndrome. Next is thromboangiitis obliterans, also known as Berger disease, which affects hand and foot vessels. This disease process affects smokers, causing inflammation and thrombosis of the arteries supplying the hands and feet, leading to claudication, cold sensitivity, ischemic pain, and eventually gangrene with auto-amputation of the digits. Treatment is smoking cessation. Next is Raynaud disease, which affects hand and foot vessels. Raynaud disease is an isolated disease causing inflammation and vasoconstriction in response to cold or stress, leading to white digits from lack of blood flow, progressing to blue from cyanosis, and red, which is a reactive hyperemia when blood flow is restored. Treatment is calcium channel blockers and avoiding the cold. Raynaud phenomenon affects hand and foot vessels. Raynaud phenomenon is a phenomenon that occurs with other autoimmune diseases, such as limited scleroderma, Crest syndrome, as well as systemic lupus erythematosus. Raynaud phenomenon is usually more severe than Raynaud disease. Now let's switch over to the small vessel vasculitis. First, starting with microscopic polyangiitis, which affects small vessels of the skin, lung, kidneys, and other organs. Presentation it can be similar to granulomatosis with polyangiitis with lung and kidney involvement, but there are no granulomas. And unlike in granulomatosis with polyangiitis, small vessel inflammation leads to palpable purpura. This is due to inflamed hemorrhagic vessels near the skin. It's also associated with ANCA, but in this case with P. ANCA. Remember the P's of microscopic polyangiitis. These are P. ANCA and palpable purpura. Next is Churg Strauss syndrome, which affects small vessels of the skin, the heart, and the lungs. This disease process affects those with allergies and asthma and is therefore also called allergic granulomatosis and angiitis. It can present with any type of organ damage, but with prominent asthma, allergic rhinitis, sinusitis, and the potential for peripheral neuropathy. It's also associated with eosinophilia and P. anca. Next is henoch schonlein purpura, which affects small vessels of the skin, kidneys, joints, and gut. This disease process affects mostly children. It's the most common vasculitis of, of childhood and usually occurs following a viral upper respiratory infection leading to a tetrad of manifestations, including palpable purpura on the legs and buttocks from inflamed hemorrhagic vessels, arthritis from inflammation of vessels leading to the joints, abdominal pain and potentially bloody stool from affected gut vessels, and renal disease from renal vessel involvement. The inflamed intestines can also lead to intussusception because the swelling can act as a lead point to drag itself into the adjacent loop of bowel. IgA immune complex deposition occurs in capillaries, accounting for the inflammation. And finally is cryoglobulinemia, which affects small vessels of the skin, the kidneys, and the gut. This disease process affects mostly adults with hepatitis C. In cryoglobulinemia, there are proteins in the bloodstream that precipitate in cold but redissolve with warming. These proteins are usually immunoglobulins and complement proteins, and when deposited in the capillaries, inflammation and vessel damage occurs. Remember, the C in cryoglobulinemia goes with hepatitis C. Next, let's talk about cardiac and vascular tumors. Cardiac tumors are uncommon. There are essentially two tumors to remember. Myxomas, which are found in adults, and rhabdomyomas, which are found in children. Myxomas are almost always found in the left atrium and have the potential to act as a ball valve, where during diastole, when blood flows from the left atrium to the left ventricle, the tumor moves with it and blocks flow. This flow obstruction can lead to a transient drop in cardiac output 
and syncopal episodes due to cerebral hypoperfusion. There's a potential for intravascular tumor embolism, small pieces entering the bloodstream, potentially leading to strokes or other vascular occlusive processes. Rhabdomyomas are associated with tuberous sclerosis and are a tumor of the striated muscle itself. It is benign and may regress. Vascular tumors include the following. Kaposi sarcoma is a tumor caused by human herpes virus 8. The malignant cells arise from the lymphatic endothelium. Although there are types that do not require an immunocompromised state, the most commonly tested association is with AIDS. The lesions are purple-red macules that subsequently enlarge to papules and nodules and can, and can occur on the skin, intraorally, and in the gastrointestinal tract. AIDS patients who have Kaposi sarcoma often see improvement in these lesions after antiretroviral treatment. Capillary or strawberry hemangiomas classically are facial lesions found in infants. They grow rapidly and then slowly fade. Almost all will regress by nine years of age. No treatment is necessary unless they cause problems such as blockage of the nostrils or visual impairment. Angiomyolipomas are, as the name implies, tumors that include blood vessels, angio, muscle, myo, and fat, lipo. Similarly to rhabdomyomas, these tumors are also associated with tuberous sclerosis. Angiosarcomas are malignant neoplasms of endothelial cells and are rare. Angiosarcoma of the liver is associated with exposure to vinyl chloride, which is used to make polyvinyl chloride, the most commonly produced plastic, PVC. It is also associated with arsenic and thorium dioxide. That's the end of this section. In the next, we'll begin with pharmacology.